June 18. Athaliah rules in Judah. When Athaliah, the mother of King Ahaziah of Judah, learned that her son was dead, she began to destroy the rest of the royal family. But Ahaziah's sister Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Ahaziah's infant son Joash and stole him away from among the rest of the king's children, who were about to be killed. She put Joash and his nurse in a bedroom to hide him from Athaliah, so the child was not murdered. Joash remained hidden in the temple of the Lord for six years, while Athaliah ruled over the land. From Second Chronicles When Athaliah, the mother of King Ahaziah of Judah, learned that her son was dead, she began to destroy the rest of Judah's royal family. But Ahaziah's sister Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Ahaziah's infant son Joash and stole him away from among the rest of the king's children, who were about to be killed. She put Joash and his nurse in a bedroom. In this way, Jehoshaphat, wife of Jehoiada the priest, and sister of Ahaziah, hid the child so that Athaliah could not murder him. Joash remained hidden in the temple of God for six years, while Athaliah ruled over the land. From 2 Kings Revolt Against Athaliah In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoiada the priest summoned the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, and the palace guards to come to the temple of the Lord. He made a solemn pact with them and made them swear an oath of loyalty there in the Lord's temple. Then he showed them the king's son. Jehoiada told them, This is what you must do. A third of you who are on duty on the Sabbath are to guard the royal palace itself. Another third of you are to stand guard at the sewer gate and the final third must stand guard behind the palace guard. These three groups will all guard the palace. The other two units, who are off duty on the Sabbath, must stand guard for the king at the Lord's temple. Form a bodyguard around the king and keep your weapons in hand. Kill anyone who tries to break through. Stay with the king wherever he goes. So the commanders did everything as Jehoiada the priest ordered. The commanders took charge of the men reporting for duty that Sabbath, as well as those who were going off duty. They brought them all to Jehoiada the priest, and he supplied them with the spears and small shields that had once belonged to King David and were stored in the temple of the Lord. The palace guards stationed themselves around the king with their weapons ready. They formed a line from the south side of the temple around to the north side and all around the altar. Then Jehoiada brought out Joash, the king's son, placed the crown on his head and presented him with a copy of God's laws. They anointed him and proclaimed him king, and everyone clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king! From Second Chronicles In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoiada the priest decided to act. He summoned his courage and made a pact with five army commanders, Azariah son of Jeroam, Ishmael son of Jehohanan, Azariah son of Obed, Maaseah son of Adiah, and Elishaphet son of Zikri. These men traveled secretly throughout Judah and summoned the Levites and clan leaders in all the towns to come to Jerusalem. They all gathered at the temple of God, where they made a solemn pact with Joash, the young king. Jehoiada said to them, Here is the king's son. The time has come for him to reign. The Lord has promised that a descendant of David will be our king. This is what you must do. When you priests and Levites come on duty on the Sabbath, a third of you will serve as gatekeepers, another third will go over to the royal palace, and the final third will be at the foundation gate. Everyone else should stay in the courtyards of the Lord's temple. Remember, only the priests and Levites on duty may enter the temple of the Lord, for they are set apart as holy. The rest of the people must obey the Lord's instructions and stay outside. You Levites, form a bodyguard around the king and keep your weapons in hand. Kill anyone who tries to enter the temple. Stay with the king wherever he goes. So the Levites and all the people of Judah did everything as Jehoiada the priest ordered. The commanders took charge of the men reporting for duty that Sabbath, as well as those who were going off duty. Jehoiada the priest did not let anyone go home after their shift ended. Then Jehoiada supplied the commanders with the spears and the large and small shields that had once belonged to King David and were stored in the temple of God. He stationed all the people around the king with their weapons ready. They formed a line from the south side of the temple around to the north side and all around the altar. 
Then Jehoiada and his sons brought out Joash, the king's son, placed the crown on his head, and presented him with a copy of God's laws. They anointed him and proclaimed him king, and everyone shouted, Long live the king! From Second Kings When Athaliah heard all the noise made by the palace guards and the people, she hurried to the Lord's temple to see what was happening. When she arrived, she saw the newly crowned king standing in his place of authority by the pillar, as was the custom at times of coronation. The commanders and trumpeters were surrounding him, and people from all over the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. When Athaliah saw all this, she tore her clothes in despair and shouted, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest ordered the commanders who were in charge of the troops, Take her to the soldiers in front of the temple and kill anyone who tries to rescue her. For the priest had said, She must not be killed in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her and led her out to the gate where horses enter the palace grounds, and she was killed there. From Second Chronicles The Death of Athaliah When Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and the shouts of praise to the king, she hurried to the Lord's temple to see what was happening. When she arrived, she saw the newly crowned king standing in his place of authority by the pillar at the temple entrance. The commanders and trumpeters were surrounding him, and people from all over the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Singers with musical instruments were leading the people in a great celebration. When Athaliah saw all this, she tore her clothes in despair and shouted, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest ordered the commanders who were in charge of the troops, Take her to the soldiers in front of the temple, and kill anyone who tries to rescue her. For the priest had said, She must not be killed in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her and led her out to the entrance of the horse gate on the palace grounds, and they killed her there. From Second Kings Jehoiada's Religious Reforms Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people. And all the people of the land went over to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They demolished the altars and smashed the idols to pieces, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Jehoiada the priest stationed guards at the temple of the Lord. Then the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, the palace guards, and all the people of the land escorted the king from the temple of the Lord. They went through the gate of the guards and into the palace, and the king took his seat on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was peaceful, because Athaliah had been killed at the king's palace. Joash was seven years old when he became king. From Second Chronicles Then Jehoiada made a covenant between himself and the king and the people, that they would be the Lord's people. And all the people went over to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They demolished the altars and smashed the idols, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Jehoiada now put the priests and Levites in charge of the temple of the Lord, following all the directions given by David. He also commanded them to present burnt offerings to the Lord, as prescribed by the law of Moses, and to sing and rejoice as David had instructed. He also stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the Lord's temple to keep out those who for any reason were ceremonially unclean. Then the commanders, nobles, rulers, and all the people of the land escorted the king from the temple of the Lord. They went through the upper gate and into the palace, and they seated the king on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was peaceful, because Athaliah had been killed. From Second Kings, Joash rules in Judah. Joash began to rule over Judah in the seventh year of King Jehu's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem forty years. His mother was Zibiah from Beersheba. All his life Joash did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, because Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Yet even so, he did not destroy the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. One day King Joash said to the priests, Collect all the money brought as a sacred offering to the Lord's temple, whether it is a regular assessment, a payment of vows, or a voluntary gift. Let the priests take some of that money to pay for whatever repairs are needed at the temple. 
But by the 23rd year of Joash's reign, the priests still had not repaired the temple. So King Joash called for Jehoiada and the other priests and asked them, Why haven't you repaired the temple? Don't use any more money for your own needs. From now on, it must all be spent on temple repairs. So the priests agreed not to accept any more money from the people, and they also agreed to let others take responsibility for repairing the temple. Then Jehoiada the priest bored a hole in the lid of a large chest and set it on the right-hand side of the altar at the entrance of the temple of the Lord. The priests guarding the entrance put all of the people's contributions into the chest. Whenever the chest became full, the court secretary and the high priest counted the money that had been brought to the Lord's temple and put it into bags. Then they gave the money to the construction supervisors who used it to pay the people working on the Lord's temple, the carpenters, the builders, the masons, and the stonecutters. They also used the money to buy the timber and the finished stone needed for repairing the Lord's temple, and they paid any other expenses related to the temple's restoration. The money brought to the temple was not used for making silver bowls, lamp snuffers, basins, trumpets, or other articles of gold or silver for the temple of the Lord. It was paid to the workmen who used it for the temple repairs. No accounting of this money was required from the construction supervisors because they were honest and trustworthy men. However, the money that was contributed for guilt offerings and sin offerings was not brought into the Lord's temple. It was given to the priests for their own use. Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem forty years. His mother was Zibiah from Beersheba. Joash did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight throughout the lifetime of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada chose two wives for Joash, and he had sons and daughters. At one point, Joash decided to repair and restore the temple of the Lord. He summoned the priests and Levites and gave them these instructions. Go to all the towns of Judah and collect the required annual offerings so that we can repair the temple of your God. Do not delay. But the Levites did not act immediately. So the king called for Jehoiada, the high priest, and asked him, Why haven't you demanded that the Levites go out and collect the temple taxes from the towns of Judah and from Jerusalem? Moses, the servant of the Lord, levied this tax on the community of Israel in order to maintain the tabernacle of the covenant. Over the years, the followers of wicked Athaliah had broken into the temple of God, and they had used all the dedicated things from the temple of the Lord to worship the images of Baal. So now the king ordered a chest to be made and set outside the gate leading to the temple of the Lord. Then a proclamation was sent throughout Judah and Jerusalem, telling the people to bring to the Lord the tax that Moses, the servant of God, had required of the Israelites in the wilderness. This pleased all the leaders and the people, and they gladly brought their money and filled the chest with it. Whenever the chest became full, the Levites would carry it to the king's officials. Then the court secretary and an officer of the high priest would come and empty the chest and take it back to the temple again. This went on day after day, and a large amount of money was collected. The king and Jehoiada gave the money to the construction supervisors, who hired masons and carpenters to restore the temple of the Lord. They also hired metal workers who made articles of iron and bronze for the Lord's temple. The men in charge of the renovation worked hard and made steady progress. They restored the temple of God according to its original design and strengthened it. When all the repairs were finished, they brought the remaining money to the king and Jehoiada. It was used to make various articles for the temple of the Lord, articles for worship services and for burnt offerings, including ladles and other articles made of gold and silver. And the burnt offerings were sacrificed continually in the temple of the Lord during the lifetime of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada lived to a very old age, finally dying at 130. He was buried among the kings in the city of David because he had done so much good in Judah for God and his temple. Jehoiada's reforms reversed. But after Jehoiada's death, the leaders of Judah came and bowed before King Joash and persuaded him to listen to their advice. They decided to abandon the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they worshipped Asherah poles and idols instead. Because of this sin, divine anger fell on Judah and Jerusalem. Yet the Lord sent prophets to bring them back to him. The prophets warned them, but still the people would not listen. 
Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's commands and keep yourselves from prospering? You have abandoned the Lord, and now He has abandoned you. Then the leaders plotted to kill Zechariah, and King Joash ordered that they stone him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. That was how King Joash repaid Jehoiada for his loyalty by killing his son. Zechariah's last words as he died were, May the Lord see what they are doing and avenge my death. The Death of Jehu At about that time, the Lord began to cut down the size of Israel's territory. King Haziel conquered several sections of the country east of the Jordan River, including all of Gilead, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh. He conquered the area from the town of Aror by the Arnon Gorge to as far north as Gilead and Bashan. The rest of the events in Jehu's reign, everything he did and all his achievements, are recorded in the Book of the History of the Kings of Israel. When Jehu died, he was buried in Samaria. Then his son Jehoahaz became the next king. In all, Jehu reigned over Israel from Samaria for 28 years.